Good evening and welcome everyone. It's nice to see a full house here tonight. Um, this is not a regular Board of Education meeting. This is our budget workshop um, that we hold in advance of our next reg regularly scheduled Board of Education meeting next Wednesday, March 18th. Um, so with that said, we will um, ask Dr. Grossman to lead us through some of the questions that the board has posed and he may have heard from the community. Um, and we'll go through those questions in line with the budget that was presented by, we're gonna have to call Jenny Emery, that the budget that was presented by the administration. Thank you so much. Number one, I wanna thank our administrative team for being here this evening and supporting the work that we did with the administrative budget. I also wanna thank the, the community that is here and the community that is watching the, this evening regarding the administrative proposal for the, the budget. I had the opportunity this week to speak at two different events that I spent some time this week at the Senior Center at one o'clock in the afternoon having a community conversation with community members coming in and dialoguing with me and me being able to present to the community regarding the administrative budget for the school board that was presented to the school board. And then on Monday evening, I had the opportunity to present this budget also to the K through five PTO groups. So it, a lot of those members are actually here tonight. So I, I thank you for that, for coming tonight. So the Board of Education did have some questions of the administration that I'd like to present this evening. First, what I would like to do is remind. I'm just trying to get Jenny Emery on the horn. Jenny, are you there? I can hear you. OK, can you hear us? I'll put you on mute. OK, thank you. Welcome, Jenny. The first thing that I would like to remind the board and the, the community that the, the budget requested is a 2.92% budget. And again, that is within the guidelines that was set by the, the Board of Finance. And you can see from this slide that we also have a quality and diversity fund of $982,910 and a small capital fund of $950,000. On the next slide, I did provide for you, again, this was the slide that was presented, the operational budget summary. And as I shared with the, the board in the community last week, just to roll over in contractual costs, it's a 1.77 addition but when you add in the quality and diversity fund and the special education which is all existing funds this budget that is in front of you a standing still number is a 2.75 and then when you take the net additions and reductions and retirement savings the budget comes to a 2.92 so it's very important to know that the standing still number of what we were working with to to come in was a 2.75 now I would like to go into the questions that were asked. In light of enrollment projections, are there building space issues we should anticipate? If you recall, I did recommend within this budget an additional kindergarten teacher for Kelly Lane Primary School. And we, as you see in this answer, at this time, we do not expect building or space issues, but we need to continue to monitor closely enrollment on a regular basis. The next question was quite complex. What has the full impact of spe the special education budget been over the past five years? So you could see the actuals from 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. And you could see in the line where it says the special education expense as a percent of the total actual budgeted. So you could see where we've gone from 17 to 21. The question relates also to like I said, what is the portion of our budget that is special education? But the question also reflected the revenue that we are bringing in regarding special education. And I remind you, like I mentioned last week, that any revenue that the school district brings in, it's not going into our budget. The money is given to the, the town for the town to work with. So I think the question was, what is our revenue over the past 
five years. So you could see from 2017 to 21, if we start at 17, it was uh, roughly about a half a million dollars. And now the revenue that we're bringing in is 916,000 to 990 dollars. So there is a, a, a difference in, in, in there. And you can see the percentages range from 11% to 15% of revenue at the percent of expenses. So I, I think the question was and is, is how much revenue are we bringing in compared to the expenses that we have going out? And it, it's a very clear chart of, of where we are with that. I know that's the first time that you're looking at that, so I'll stop for that if there's any question on that. I'll just ask a quick question. The out-of-district tuition seems to be on a, a, I mean, 19 was a, a high trajectory year. Um, do we think that is stabilized? I mean, I know it's super hard to predict. So, it's gonna be so that, that's a really good question. And at the current time, we are doing the best that we can. And there's been many discussions with administrators and the director of pupil services and myself. The, the ultimate goal is when we can bring children back, we bring them back into district and provide them the services that we have. So right now, that is the best number that we have projected for next year. As I've said before, that can change. Um, that is something that is a moving number, but it is something that the staff works really hard and analyze that the, the last thing that we want to do is outplace a, a youngster. We, we would love youngsters to be able to stay within the Granby Public Schools. Can I ask a question? So um, I've probably asked this before, but so forgive me. So for the proposed budget, for example, the $6 million cost, what part of that is based on known actual costs, because we have known students, and what part of that is a projection? Everything is based on actual, not projection. This is our actual cost. Well, I'll say it in two terms. It's actual of what we project for next year, there's no wiggle room. We're, we're not adding in a, an extra bus for a student. We're not adding in um, a projection of one student that we don't know of. This is just actual students that we have right now that we're projecting to be out of tuition next year. So if, if we got a new student. Correct. Um, and who had needs that we didn't anticipate. Correct. That's not in here. That correct. Or if we have an existing student whose needs changed, that would be. Correct. Okay, so you don't make any assumptions about that? No. Okay. So it's a Actually. static, it's a static correct. number, because we could have someone move out or we could have correct. someone move in. Correct. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions from the board on this slide? It's a great question. The, the next one, what clubs have been cut from the middle school budget? When we say clubs that have been cut, it's clubs that have not run. And, and what I want the community and the board to understand that we're always going to be there to offer kids clubs that, and activities that want to be offered clubs and activities. But the club that, did, that has not run in several years that has been in the budget to run is our, God bless you, is the computer club for $2,270. And then their enrichment competition, we have now built that within the, the school day. So that, that's where those numbers come from with the, the clubs and activities. One of the questions I was asked is, what is not in the budget that you would add if you were given the opportunity? The administrative team, in the very beginning, and I'll remind the board and the community that this process is, it goes on almost all year. And we started this process with asking for personnel and programs. And in front of you, you will see the a list. And this is a list that you've seen already within the, the, the plus one. We just added a little bit more to it, is that there was a request for a special education supervisor. There was a request for a math interventionist at the middle school, a literacy intervention at, at the middle school. If you recall, the BRYT program teaching assistant in the social worker. The social worker at the middle school was requested, a part-time custodian, a part-time secretary support pupil services. And then from the furnitures and fixtures and equipment, there was nothing. And then the maintenance, the tree felling on the property boundary of $10,000. 
So these are all things that are not in the budget that were proposed by the administrators. At this time, in the fiscally responsible time that we're in, these are things that we would have, we had to prioritize. But these are all things that if we had a, a money that was an endless uh, amount, these are all things that the board would possibly see in the administrative budget. The next question was, what comprises of the .6 FTE at the middle school and the high school? If you recall, we did reduce a .4 FTE at the high school. And the .4 FTE at the high school, I put down there as to be determined based upon we're still going through the course registration process. But based upon past projections of what we project moving forward, we feel comfortable with a .4 reduction at the high school. The .2 FD position at the middle school, that was a position that was not filled in last year's budget that we just reduced from this year's budget. Jordan, what was that, a, is that a floating position, is that .2 FTE? So that was a .2 FTE position that was proposed in the budget last year. I, I don't know what that position was for, but Mrs. Henneberry did not need that in the budget for this year. Thank you. So it was, a, it was proposed and approved, but never filled. You got it. The next slide is how many kindergarten teachers, teaching assistants remain in the quality and diversity fund? And if you recall when I presented the, the quality and diversity budget, this is a concern that I have. There are things now that we were, with money that we had left over from previous years, we were able to take funds out of the quality and diversity to fund staff within the operational budget. So we now have the last remaining kindergarten teacher has been moved to the operating budget from the quality and diversity in the FY21 budget. There are four regular education teaching assistants budgeted in quality and diversity for FY21. It is the goal in FY22 as a projection that you saw in the quality and diversity that we will try to move two of these teaching assistants into the operation budget along with one social worker. It's again that carryover funds. We don't have as much carryover funds that we've had in the past. Jordan, are those, um, are those teaching assistant positions 0.5, point, what do you know what they're? They're 1.0. Okay, one, 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 one. thank you. The next slide is the 950,000 $950, small cap fund request a separate funding request. What is the source? The answer to that is yes. The district works closely with the Board of Finance to address small capital needs of the school system in excess of 1,000 through the Capital Improvement and Equipment Fund. A 10-year capital plan guides the purchases of buses, furniture, equipment, technology, building maintenance, and improvement projects. The Board of Finance small capital purchases over a five-year period through a low interest finance package man managed by the town. Small cap expenditures are a part of the overall annual budget referendum. What is nice is when you have a small capital fund, you're not asking the town if an emergency happens that you are really taking care of your maintenance and for us our transportation issues over time, not just going back to the town at once and saying we have a major problem. We must take care of our buildings, we must take care of our equipment, and we must take care of our transportation needs. Can I just make a comment on that sure. for, for the public? So we actually managed that through a plan that we developed. That we, we went through and did a, an analysis. What's the right word? Well, we, we examined all of our facilities oh, and, and we put an audit. An audit. Yes, an audit. That's the word I was looking for. So we 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 find that we use that fund. Um, we manage that fund through an audit that we did that identifies what has to be done this year, three years, five years, and ten years out. Right. It helps to flatten out and avoid surprises, so we don't see a spike one year and a stitch in time saves nine. Thank you. You're welcome. In addition to the math interventionists at Wells Road, what other measures are 
proposed to increase test scores. That is something that I could talk about for a long time, but I will give you some of the additions that we have in there. Curriculum writing and revision, it's a major curriculum writing summer for mathematics. Curriculum presenters, external consultants, we're really talking about bringing in staff developers that will not only be a one-shot staff developer, but will be staff developers that will work with our teachers throughout the course of the year. Updating our benchmark assessment, and that'll be a question that will be later on uh, in the slides, is that we're updating our benchmark assessments, that Kelly Lane example, Kelly Lane and Wells Road are aligning with their assessments. Right now we have Kelly Lane that has I believe a, a second version in Wells has the third version. So the, in the budget, we're aligning the, virgin, the versions of the assessment. And then one of the things that we're going to really work hard about as an administrative team and teachers is our data-driven decision-making process and how we analyze data and how we work with one another to improve student achievement and see incremental growth within each child. This was the next one that I was talking about. What does the third version part benchmark assessment mean? This is a benchmark assessment called the BAS. It's issued K through five. And Wells Road, as I said, is currently using the third version, version three, and Kelly Lane is using version two. It's important for us to align that both schools are using the same version. What budget items are in place to support the guidance department development of a strategic plan? As you recall, that the school counseling department is working on a strategic plan that will be presented to the Board of Education in the spring. And, I don't mean to interrupt, but we're talking specific to the high school or the high school and middle school? We're talking to the middle school and the high school. So, the, as I mentioned that we are doing a strategic plan that will be presented to the Board of Education in the spring. Part of what's in this budget is a curriculum revision cycle has been updated to prioritize school counseling for this summer. So therefore, in this budget, funds have been allocated to develop curriculum that will support this strategic plan. The next question, are there any budget implications with the items that were on the referendum passed in June 2019? The FY21 budget does not include any additional budgetary items for the director of facilities, business manager, or any of their staff for the upcoming school projects. The next one, what is the 2020 impact of safety and security projects? As you may recall, the Granby Public Schools received state grants in round two, round three, regarding some of the building facility projects that we have going on regarding safety and security around the, the district. There should be no financial impact within this budget for FY21 on any of the safety and security projects that we have going on. The next question, how many total iPads are included in the five carts? These are carts that, iPad carts that will be used at Kelly Lane Primary School. And there's 80 iPads that will be purchased for the carts. This will bring us up to a one to two classroom ratio. So if you take two classrooms, there'll be one cart per two classrooms. And 20 of the 80 are additional iPads will be purchased and they are needed for replacement iPads. Just curious, is there some kind of recycling program? Is there a recycling manufacturing? They do. Can you elaborate more on the point to FT and student support services listed on the personnel summary? There we go. Thank you. The point two FD reduction in the student support service lineup was reallocated from a certified to a non-certified position. No FTEs were reduced in student support services. What central what central services flooring needs to be replaced? As I mentioned when I presented the 
capital, the, the plus one in the capital part of the budget. The, this project has been broken into four phases, the entryway, the boardroom, and hallways, with the final phase offices planned for FY22. So again, this is something within our capital plan that we are moving right along within the, the process and the phase that we've implemented. And if you recall, I was mentioning at the when I presented the plus one that the, the carpet in there it is older carpet and it needs an update. And as we know, sometimes carpet doesn't hold its form to, to the best level that it needs to be. What will the new elliptical be used for in the PE class? The elliptical is considered replacement equipment. Over the next five years, the district is scheduled to replace several pieces of equipment in the PE department. For this particular item, it is at the end of the useful life, and there are no replaceable parts available for this piece of equipment. So this is the this is the workout area above the gym in the high school? Correct. I, or is this the middle school? Um, PE in the high school and PE in the middle school. So I think this one was the middle school question. Uh, there are replacement cycles going on in both schools right now. But yes, if you're talking about the high school, that would be the place. Where in the middle school do they have this kind of? I've never seen on this side, it, there's a gym, and then there's a smaller gym. And oh, it's, oh that's right. It's right in there. I have seen them. I've got it. Thank you. Can you expand on the mi middle school musical instruments and PE equipment similar to high school items? The PE equipment is the hand bike and the elliptical. Thank you, Anna. That answers that question. And the middle school musical instrument is a bass clarinet, a French horn, an F attachment, trombone, and a trumpet. So don't most students, are, are these what I would call, these are our bigger brass instruments, so by virtue, except for the bass, bass clarinet. So are these instruments that are made available to students who play them instead of the rental program? For example, if you play the flute or the non-bass clarinet, do we know? Yeah, it's also when you're transitioning a student. So you typically have a student that's played clarinet for years um, and you need a bass clarinet player. You don't ask them to go out and rent and try something new. You do a loaner instrument to get them started in the transition. And the same with the French horn. Uh, when you're expanding the trombone. We got a lot of kids playing the trombone? Um, the trombone. At your house, you got kids playing the trombone? I have trombone. <laughs> I, wouldn't, I wouldn't say a lot. My we sympathies. Have quite a few. We have quite a few <laughs> trumpet players, and we have a lot of flute players and kids that want to play the flute, in part because Sarah, our band director at Wells, is a flute player herself. So. What are, the, are the trumpets? And trumpets usually within the... No child and parent. They are typical that you would have um, a limited number of instruments in in school for a variety of reasons. So when one goes out for repair, which okay. happens often, that you have a loaner so for kids. Spare replacement yeah. of something that we already have. If you're looking for some levity, I'll, my daughter used to play the trumpet years ago, and I'll never forget the day she taught me how to empty the spit out of it. <laughs> And the next question, <laughs> speaking of spare, what, what is the need for the new Board of Education conference room chairs? And as I explained when I presented the plus one, the Board of Ed conference room is a primary professional meeting space for the district and what I've also learned in my short time here, the community. And the space is occupied regularly, and the large conference room currently has 12 coordinated chairs. And yesterday I actually sat in a meeting that there was more than 12, and the chairs that are in there are actually small <laughs> chairs that would be underneath like kids' desks, not, maybe not like Kelly Primary School desk, but so that's why there's a request for new chairs, as I explained at uh, the plus one budget. So that was the, the, the questions, and, and I'd be more, more than happy, and the administrators would be more than happy to answer any other questions that the board may have. Just a reminder, it's a 2.92 budget. 
that again, we feel as administrators that it meets the needs of us moving forward in, in a great way, but that's also respectful of the times that we are facing within our state and within the, the Granby Public Schools, and it also reflects where we are within the Granby community and falls under the guideline that the Board of Finance set at a 3.0. So I know the board members have submitted their questions. Um, so seeing uh, the public here tonight, and we love seeing the public here, um, I'm going to entertain a motion to um, amend the agenda that's going to be made by Mark to see if members of the public have comment or questions on the budget. Yeah, I would move to, um, to do that, to amend the agenda to allow for public comment and questions in, in case we have it. Second. Discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Oh, Jenny? I, Sorry? Go ahead. I just, uh, just to the extent we, any of us have any follow-up questions on what was just presented, when do you want us to read that? Um, after, after the public, um, or to, it's withdrawn. So no members of the board have additional questions before we hear from the public, but it seems that you do, Jenny? Uh, yeah, I just had one. Sure, go ahead. Sorry. We haven't voted yet, so you're good. <laughs> Okay, thank you. Um, I was just, I, I wanted to understand a little bit more, Jordan. Um, I'm focused on what I believe is the seventh slide, the, the things not budgeted that we would add if we were given an opportunity. Um, and with, a, with the caveat that uh, I know people will accuse me of trying to spend up to the limit we were given. Uh, but the, I'd like to understand what the administration is thinking about in terms of a special ed supervisor that isn't being asked for mm -hmm. because the whole the, the issues of social emotional um, challenges and the ability of teachers to meet all students needs when they get overwhelmed by special needs for some kids is a great concern to me and i'm wondering how valuable we think this position might be if we could afford to fund it so i, I i'll be in simple terms the, the position would be very valuable for the district this has been something that the, the director of pupil services has proposed in the past within the plus one i'm not sure if it made it to a board level discussion but it was proposed a, again this year by when the interim superintendent was here and, and then when i arrived that the the director of pupil services and has a very difficult job managing and working with our special education teachers, our case managers, and the, what we need to understand, all the support staff of our school, psychologists, our social workers, all fun, fall under the umbrella of the director of pupil services. Our teaching assistants fall under the director of pupil services. All at a district, PPTs and the transportation and working with the business manager falls under the director of pupil services. We have 270. Students. That's close. 275 special education students in, in our district. That is a, a lot of students, and as we've mentioned before, each one of those students has an individual education plan that we have to make sure that we are meeting the individual education plan. So in, in, in short of it, Jenny, there, there's a lot of work that goes out of the pupil services office, and to have someone that is working within that office under the direction of our current director of pupil services, it would allow us to provide even more professional development and more professional learning, not only to our teaching assistants, but allow more professional learning to teachers regarding good classroom instructional practices regarding that are not just good for special education students, but all students. So I, I could go on for a while. I, I think it is something that if we, as a board, we need to have more conversations about. Um, but at this time, when we were trying to be within a, a guideline, it, it, it just we had to respectfully just not put it into this budget no. at this time. I thank you. I appreciate that. The follow-up question is, and, and 
I, my math is very compromised at this stage. Um, um, the addition of this puts us above the guideline? It would put us at a 3.25. Okay. Okay, thank you. Thanks, and my follow-up to Jenny's question would be, so it, it's, a, it's a little more discreet. If we were, in your opinion, if we were to add the special education supervisor, do you think that would actually end up saving us money on special education in the short term? In, in, in the short term, <clears throat> I, I don't know when we say short term if we're saying in this budget cycle would it save us money. I don't know in this budget cycle if it would. I could sit here and say in the years to come would it save us money? I think it would because what I think it would allow us to do is program redesign program looking at can we take our students that are out of district and really and I've spoken about this before and bring them back and allow us to have the opportunity to do some programmatic shift and possibly develop some programmatic let me restate that programs within our own district and bringing them back right now we don't have the current resources to really be able to spend the the time that it needs to develop a, a program within our own district it's things that we're talking about right now but just with the director of pupil services time being spread so thin it's something that we really like to talk about and it, it's the goal to bring people back mm -hmm. but short term in the next year's budget the budget that is proposed i don't think from a short term it would save us money but i think long term moving out i think it could save us money okay thank you so so i have to follow up on that um and you don't have to add, answer this now jordan if we felt it was a priority to tackle to begin to tackle this issue which um because it's the right thing to do in the long run for taxpayers uh, and you had to come up with something to bring us back down to 2.99 um i would i ask that you think about what that would be so if i had to take something out of the budget and then you put this answer, in you don't have to answer it now i'm just saying yeah. I'm, yep. I'm saying I'd like to make sure I understand that before I vote on the budget. Yep. Can I? Can I? Yep. Um, so I, I share the concern, and I, um, I have spent some time since we started trying to learn more about the meat and potatoes of how this process works. Um, I think it's no secret to everybody that during the interview process and when we hired Jordan, one of the top priorities we gave him was to look at our special education services to examine not only are we providing the right services in the best way and getting the kids the stuff they need, but are we doing it in the most efficient way we can. So I support us doing what we need to do that. I also, however, for this year, support your decision to set this aside because I don't think it's, it's something that we can afford to test things on, right? So I would much rather see you get the time that you need to put that whole system in place, all of your recommendations, of, uh, all at once, uh, before we start making, because that's a significant change. Um, so I, I, I think ultimately we do need to make changes. We do need to make improvements. This might very well be the thing that we need to do, but I, I would feel much more comfortable with that plan in front of us, what we're doing, soup to nuts and how this fits into the soup to nuts. It's, and it's the same thing with the Bright program. Um, they, 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 in my mind, they're gonna go hand in hand. And that's why you see it on the, the, this list. And that's why I think it's important for the community and the board to know where we are with this. And what we're trying to do is put together a plan that is systematic that short-term fix and long-term fix and align with the ultimate goal is to make sure we're providing incredible services to all children within in Grandview. That, that's the ultimate goal. Thank you. 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 Thank you
So I, uh, I have one final question, then, and um, thank you for indulging me. The, um, so, Jordan, are you comfortable that this budget provides you uh, not just the time, but the resources to do the evaluation you feel you need to do to give us the right guidance a year from now? I, I do. With being here for seven weeks and really beginning to learn the, the team that I'm surrounded with, I think it, it, it provides us an opportunity for me to really work closely with our director of pupil services and put a plan together that really makes sense for the Board of Education to uh, approve. Now again, I'll say it again, if we were looking at a five or six percent that if the Board of Finance said tonight, well, you can have five percent. This would be something that that, that would be. That. Uh, I know they're not shaking their heads. <laughs> this would be something with some of the other things that we would front load this plan. It, but it, this does give us time, and we are going to move the district forward. I'm just happy that we're engaging in a conversation. Uh, about where we feel that we can provide our best resources for special education students, but I also view our special education department and our pupil services department being able to branch off more than just our special education students, but also working with regular education students, also in sharing expertise and in good instructional practices. Great, thank you very much. Okay, we had a motion on the table. Um, we had a second. We had no discussion on that motion. Now I'll call for a vote um, to open it up to the public um, for comment or question. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstention, seeing none, the motion passes. So if there's members of the public at this time who wish to come up and address the board specific to this budget, I would invite you to come up. And it's ni always nice to see folks here. So with that said, I see Susan. Come on up. Welcome. Thank you. I just have a few short questions. I think they can be answered uh, immediately. And thank you for all your hard work. I'm always extremely impressed by the entire staff uh, of everybody in this Board of Education. Very proud of you. Thank you. Great job. Okay, uh, so my first question was uh, number 16. This is on the school year. It's page three. Uh, idea grant, just so I understand clearly, it says a portion of special education FTE was previously expended in the idea grant, has not increased at the same rate as teacher salaries, therefore a portion of the salaries would be assumed in the general fund. Do I understand this? The 40,000 is that? That's Correct. what that is? Okay. Uh, yep. Correct. That was in the, the plus one budget, not in this budget. Okay. Okay. Yep. Um, then on page eight, um, there are, I noticed, under purchases, 316,000. Uh, there are three zero turn lawnmowers for 48,000. Um, Susan, I'm not following on page eight. Are you on she's our budget book? Oh, I'm the plus sorry, one. I'm on this original thing. Uh, that's the plus one. Okay, that's the plus one. Oh, plus okay, one. just I'm so sorry. we're aligning. Is that confusing? I'm sorry. Um, there were three zero-turn lawn uh, lawnmowers, and I said, who does the current maintenance now? I assume it's in the, someone at the school. And I said, could Public Works give any assistance to save any money there? Uh, is it at all possible, maybe, instead of buying lawnmowers? Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it's just a thought. Okay. It's a good thought, and we do um, collaborate with the Public Works when we can, but they're staffed to handle the town and we're staffed to handle the schools. So I see. if so they were separate. to do the schools, they'd have to add staff, so it would. Okay. <clears throat> All right. And then there was another uh, replacement of existing technology, 191,077. Can any of the dollars, or maybe it's already factored in, be garnered from the sale or exchange of the old equipment? Could we resell it, or was that already factored in, or is there any money to be saved by doing that? 
My understanding, and we've talked about this before as a board, I think this came up last year, and to Brandon's point, are we recycling the devices? We do tend to get a good life's, a life's use out of these devices, and by the time that we're, at, we're asking for replacement devices, they are at the end of their useful life. So Okay, so are they of any use maybe to donate to the vets or something? Maybe there's some benefit there rather than just that's what we garner do. us any money. Oh, that's what we do. We donate? We donate, or and we also um, sometimes uh, the useful life at the school is done. But the, well, town, the senior center at the there. town sometimes, yes, they're um, monitors or all, all types of different equipment wherever we can. Okay. Yeah. All right. That answer. Thank you. Thank you, Susan. Yep. Yeah. Susan Patrick, shall we read <laughs> Any other members of the public who have questions specific to this budget or comments specific to the budget? Come on up, Bill. Welcome. Maybe just family affair tonight. <laughs> I have a simple question and an easy question. That always scares me when someone says that. <laughs> so my two easy different questions or <laughs> <laughs> um, my easy question is I'm looking at the special ed budget. Revenue from other towns for special ed. Is that students that come into Granby from other towns that you provide the services here? Correct. Okay. So other towns are outplacing in the Granby. Hartland. Yeah. Hartland or, or, we, or our Hartford students okay. that attend school okay. in Granby but must reimburse us for the special education gotcha. costs. And the, the other question is, could you explain the quality and diversity fund? I just, I don't get it. For some reason, I just don't understand. Yeah, so I'll, I'll read it. And that seems to be revenue, I think, that the, you get. The, the quality and diversity fund is funds that we receive from Hartford for the students that come to the Granby Public Schools, and, and there's a formula that if we obtain 4% of our population makes up students from Harford, right. we get a, a, a dollar amount. So I believe it's 8,000 for children that are in grades one through 12, and it's 10,000 for children that are in kindergarten. So if you add up as many students that we have, in the Granby Public Schools, that's the amount of our quality and diversity okay. fund. Because I noticed in one of the um, the sections you were looking to reduce your reliance on Q and D for right. your your operating. So, I guess how does that fit in? Does so that mean you're looking to reduce the number that come in? Go ahead. Or so that's a great question. It, when we first started funding full day kindergarten as a board, this is before I was on the board. I think anyone here was on. Jenny was on the board. We funded those full day kindergarten teachers out of the quality and diversity fund. And as anyone who has a good financial brain knows, it does not, you cannot continue to fund operating expenses out of a grant that may or may not go away. It's just not smart sense. Right. So over the years, a board goal has been to move the kindergarten teachers in slowly into the operating budget and out of the quality and diversity fund. And that's what we've done. Um, it's been painful, <laughs> but we've done it. Okay, so you're looking at the possibility of either reducing the funds or at some point the funds just may go away? That we actually got cut last year okay. and we, uh, the quality and diversity fund um, is something that we would like to rely on, but being a self-sufficient board, we can't rely on it. Okay. Um, the, okay. the financial factors that go into it are out of our control. Okay. Great, hey, can you. I just ask you that sure. for a minute? Jenny, um, sure. Bill, Great Jenny time. has something to okay. say. Yeah, uh, I don't know. I, I apologize for not being there. The, uh, the kids that we send out of district to the magnet schools cost us tuition and so part of the goal of the board has been that the quality and diversity funds will always be available to fund their educational choices as well and so we've always been trying to maintain some balance there so that if, if the grants disappear tomorrow a ninth grader that had taken advantage of a magnet school we, we could see them through um, and, and that's why we try to keep a balance in that fund. Gotcha. Okay. And also, uh, final note, we yes. have seen a decrease in number of students attending magnet schools who choose to come back to Granby. Um, so okay. to us, that's success that's because right. we love to keep students sure. here. Um, but thanks, Bill. Appreciate okay, thanks. the comments and the questions. Any other members of the public who would like to ask a question on the budget or make a comment on the budget? We welcome you. All right, here's where my auction gavel comes into play. Going once, going twice, speak now or forever hold your peace. <laughs> going three times. All right, thank you, members of the public. Um, so we're going to return to our 
budget workshop piece. So traditionally what has happened is that the board has discussed, um, we've gone over the questions the board has posed to the superintendent. We've heard from the public. Um, the next logical step is to see um, if anyone has, usually we reflect and come to our next board meeting and say, this is what I want to see. I've thought about everything I've heard. I've thought about the questions and this is what I would like to see cut or added to the budget. Um, so absent objection, I'll follow that form tonight. Board members? You mean, yeah, you're inviting us to give our thoughts tonight? Yes, but we're not voting on the budget tonight. I got it. Um, so I'll go first. I, I, I will not be here in person next week, but I, I cleared my calendar so I can call in. Um, I, I support the budget. Um, this job gets tougher and tougher for us every year. It gets tougher and tougher for Jordan and our entire team every year um, to continue to provide the services and, and the, the quality of education that we all want and frankly our constituents demand and do it within the constraints that the, the taxpayers can still support. Um, and I, I think we do it every year, but I think this year in particular, you guys have done a very, very good job. So again, just our, there's very little in here beyond our standing still numbers, and yet we're still finding ways to increase the, the quality of education that we're giving our kids. I think it's very, very responsible. I wish we could do more, I cert um, but I, I, I support it and I, I intend to vote um, yes on it um, to send it to the public or send it to the Board of Finance, actually, for them to send it. Brandon? Yeah, I think um, I'm of the opinion that we should uh, you know, take the week, um, come back on Wednesday, and. If there's anything that we feel that needs to be edited, then we can come back then and follow our traditional format. Um, I know Jordan and the staff put a lot of hard work into the budget, and I think this is a good budget. Um, so to that point, um, still like the time to final thoughts Reflect. on that. So. Okay. Dave? Yeah, I think that in a very short time, Jordan has seen the commendable job of putting this together. And I support it. Sarah? I appreciate you coming in underneath, uh, under the, the guideline uh, that, the, that the Board of Finance set. So um, you clearly have worked really hard, and how you managed to accomplish that in your short time here is pretty remarkable. So thank you for all that work. Jenny? Uh, I also agree. I, I also appreciate Jordan uh, your effort to come underneath the guideline you're coming into an entirely new environment um, I have some concerns about you know the longer term perspective I think we had some fortunate situations in terms of the scheduling of, of um, uh, salary changes and so forth that um, I think this was, an, and I don't mean this derogatorily at all, I think it was an easier year than, than some may be, and uh, we cannot fall behind on fair pay to our teachers and stuff. So I, I just, I don't, I don't want to lose any opportunity to do what we need to do now because there's going to be that many more challenges tomorrow. So I will be following up uh, on a couple of those issues. Uh, you know, I think it's a great budget. I can support it as it is. I just want to make sure that that we're not um, uh, not uh, that that we address everything we can possibly address this year because it only gets harder next year. Thanks, Jenny. Um, and final comment, I would echo the sentiment. Jordan's second day on the job, he presented the administrative budget, which had been started by Alan Adley and continued with our interim. That plus one budget was 3.69%. Um, the Board of Finance guideline to the Board of Education is 3%. This budget comes in underneath that, does not cut any services, and most importantly to me, um, actually recognizes that we have class sizes that are critical to this board, adding a section, a teacher in kindergarten, so we keep those classes manageable. Um, I support this budget, um, and 
I'm impressed with you hitting the ground running, um, but also being responsive to a very new board, right? We're new to you. Um, being responsive to our vision, mission and vision, which is teachers are critical, class sizes are critical, technology is critical, um, and also the maintenance of our facilities. Um, it, when you make a budget, it's really easy to say, well, you know, this $60,000, we need to move this here because that roof will last another year. And before you know it, you end up in a school district with decaying facilities um, because you have it maintained. And it's that delicate, delicate balance um, that you have stepped into nicely. And I appreciate your work. And um, thanks to everyone on the team who created um, this document for this board. Doritha, what do you think about the budget? <laughs> Um, actually, I don't have the book, the exact book, but I, I do know, I, I'll take that out. <laughs> but um, uh, from what I've heard today, it seems very logical and sensible. The one thing that um, I'd like to echo would be um, Ms. Emery's comment that there are some things that personally I think that it would be a good addition to the budget, like for example, the math interventionist at the middle school. I believe, especially cons considering the test score reports that we've gotten from the middle school on math testing, the standards are very low right now for, for middle school students. And I think that, yes, having the math interventionist at the well at Wells Road would be useful, but definitely something needs to be done about math at the middle school. So that's just something that I'm thinking about, but that's, I think, other than that, it is very sensible. Thank you, Lauren. All right. Any further comments? Mm -hmm. Anna said, do we want to ask the board if there's any changes or anything that they need before next week? To prepare. I can ask the board. I think Brandon's reserved on judgment. Mark supports the budget as is. Dave, for, and I, stop me if I'm misspeaking. I think, believe Dave, Sarah, and I and support the budget as is. And I think Jenny wants to ruminate and, and have that takeaway um, from the administration, which is if you were to bring the budget in at 3%, um, what more could you do? Is that fair, Jenny? Jenny? Yeah, for trying yeah, I, I, I will move back to you, Jordan. I'm just, I'm, I'm playing with a couple of numbers in my head. Um, I, I support this overall with any other information. Um. Okay, thank you. Um, at this time, I'd look for a motion from one of our august board members to adjourn. So moved. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? No abstention seeing none, the meeting is over. Thank you, members of the public.